very, very grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the maker of heaven and earth and giver of all life and breath, for blessing us to be here. Uh, we greet you always in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As always, we're so thankful to our maker for blessing us to remain alive up to this present time. Uh, we can certainly say it's good for us to be here. Yeah. Uh, God, uh, certainly in, uh, here in the uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh, we're certainly always very grateful for our, uh, the apostles and certainly the deceased prophets of old. We're thankful for them and uh, we're certainly very, very grateful for our dearly beloved pastor, Pastor Jennings, who is here with us today. If there's visitors here, we certainly greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're thankful for you. And certainly for those who are watching or perhaps listening uh, to this broadcast across the world, uh, we certainly greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus likewise. Now we're here for no other reason but to hear the word of God. Amen. That thing that is so very, very needful for the saving of man's soul. Is that right? My God, so we want everybody now to limit the movement within this small place of worship. Uh, while we're here, this is the house of God. And certainly, my God, the word is going to be preached today. For the visitors, as always, uh, if you have questions, please hold them till later. Uh, but listen carefully because the information that's being given by Pastor Jennings is something and is so critical to your life. Uh, in fact, it's the most important information you will ever get in this life simply because it's promised not only of this life but of the life to come. So therefore, at this time, we're going to present unto our leader, teacher, guide, and I say again, he's the messenger of the Almighty God, the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings. <clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. As always, we bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. You brothers in front may be seated. There is no God equal to him or greater than him. We thank him for his divine guidance and his perfect wisdom, his understanding of all things. We thank him for the prophets and thank him for the apostles, to all of our ministers that are present, all of our guests. We're glad to be back here in Brooklyn, New York again. We had a beautiful meeting last night. And I'm pretty sure, as always, God will give us something good today. Uh, it is always a blessing to see how the word of the Lord affects so many people. So many people of different walks of life have a testimony of what God done for them. And no one should take this opportunity for granted because we don't know where death is. But while we are alive and remain, we should make our calling an election sure. Consider that this is an opportunity given not just to you that are here, but the people all around the world to get right on God terms. That, that's something totally opposite from what most people are used to doing. They get it right on their terms. But you have to get it right on God's terms. And you're going to find out quickly, God won't agree with you. And you won't agree with him. Because when God tell you something, I mean it hits you hard. Sometimes you get angry, sometimes you rebel, because the nature of the flesh is to fight what they can't understand. But if you get an understanding, you'll find yourself slowly but surely surrender, give in, give up, give over. And you will say just like Jesus said, not my will, but let thine will be done. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, we're grateful. We're still rejoicing over our holy convocation that we Came out of, what, two weeks ago now? 44 was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and some received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The work of the Lord continued to grow continuously to see our new extended family and meet some brothers and sisters that I met for the first time and different ones gave me their individual testimony 
how the word of God affect them. God's word is a life changer. And it will interrupt your life sometime in the most unlikely way. And when God interrupts your life, it may not feel good at the time. Because some interruptions, we don't understand why this had to happen or that had to happen. But later on, you begin to understand that it was God's will. Because God's desire is that nobody go to hell. He said it's not his will that any man perish, but all come to repentance. That's a blessing within itself. You're serving a God who don't want you to go to hell. And if he don't want me to be lost, then he have to make the way for me to be saved. And he made the way, didn't he? Making the way straight. Now it's up to us to accept the way that God made. Now God don't make the way for us to come in and try to make modifications to God's way. He don't want our personal views. He don't want our opinion. He don't want our idea. He want us to accept everything he said. Now let me give you an understanding. God do not expect for you to obey him overnight. He's not a foolish God. He's a wise God. God know his standard is very high. And no man. I don't care. If he don't walk. He float. No man. Can do everything that God commands. Overnight. If you don't believe me, just look at yourself. Some of you have been walking with God 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And still struggling with some things. Am I right, I said. But uh, the only thing that keep you hanging in there, you don't want to go to hell. There ain't no air conditions in hell. And you won't burn up. Now, if you would burn up, that wouldn't be that bad. But fall in, get consumed, it's over. Amen. <laughs> but you got to fall as long as God remain God. And then God take the body that you now have by his creating power and fix your flesh that it will never be consumed. Yet it will fall as long as God remain God and there's no end to him. And all the wickedness that you committed will come to your mind. You will remember why you're down there. Fire will be wrapped around your body tighter than your skin. The fire of hell is not like the fire of earth. The fire of earth is not God's anger. Because man can put it out. Man can control the fire. Man can contain it. But the fire of hell is the eternal everlasting anger of God. And the reason why God designed it that way. Because man rejects him now. So God has given us the chance to get it right now. Right now. And please don't think that the word of God is designed to please our flesh. My God, man, if I can change some things in the Bible, huh, it wouldn't be a Bible. Why, why pick and choose? I would just get rid of it. Because the whole thing hurts you. And I mean the whole Bible hurts you. But because God told Ezekiel, eat the whole roll. He didn't tell him tear off a certain end, peel off a little bit, eat the whole thing. Well, my job as a messenger of the God of Abraham is to bring you the whole thing, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. 
And that's what we're doing. God be our helper, giving the little here and the little there. Some folks still don't want it. That's right. But God knows we're going to give it to you anyway. That's right. All right, let's get your Bible open. I want to talk about falsehood. Hiding on the falsehood in the book of Isaiah. Amen. And I also want to talk about come out from among them. Yes. And be separate. Amen. We don't even have no room here. They sitting all back out there. So uh, Brooklyn, we want to open up a church here in Brooklyn. And this is what we're looking to do. And New York, you're expensive. My God, you're expensive. <laughs> I can't, I can't help it. People say, you know, every telecast I see, it's like you're opening up places everywhere. Well, I wish I was a millionaire. I wish I was a millionaire because I don't like coming in a place and leaving without setting up church. I don't like using other people's facilities because sometimes if you preach what they don't like, they can close the door on you. Hey Amen. I know from experience, uh... We had 25 come last night to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, we were told that we can use the facility here to baptize, but then all of a sudden they said, no, we couldn't use it. So they had to scramble around. We told all the people that was here last night, they said, we all coming back. We ain't leaving without that baptism. Amen. So they all came back and added to some more that want to be baptized today. So there was a preacher that decided to open up his church and uh, we're going to get them down there and baptize them. And maybe by the time we baptize everybody after this service and some more by this evening, then maybe he can find out who I am when I leave town. Right now, he may not know me. Well, keep it that way. <laughs> but uh, I have been to places in America and abroad, and preachers have said I can use their facilities, and they came to the service because they were watching us on television, but then the word of God hit them, and they got so angry, they wouldn't say nothing, but what they done, waited till we got to the church. People lined up in cars like a funeral line. Loads of people. While the preacher delivered, he locked his doors and then sit in his church and laugh. Because he refused to let folks come in and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So for that reason, I would to God that I have so much capital not to buy a plane, not to buy cars, not to buy mansions, but to set up temples where truth can be preached so that people can have a righteous place to go to, a city of refuge, you know, where the word of God can be preached freely, where the word can have a free course. So I believe one day God going to make it happen. I just wish he'd hurry up. Because I'm in need right now. Right now. God willing, we're, amen, looking on, working on them simultaneously, opening up places in Detroit and Chicago and other, as everybody wants us to open up a church everywhere all around the world. I often tell the folk, you know, I mock them over the air because I get countless and countless of emails. Pastor Jenner, we need a church here. We need a church here. We need a church here. We need a church there. We need one everywhere. We need it everywhere. But you got to work to do it. Is that right? Yeah. You're going to have to work. You want me to work with you and bring you the gospel? You're going to have to work with us to set up shop. Yeah. 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 Amen. I would love to set up churches everywhere. I don't care where it's at. I'm not the type of man that's choicy about a neighborhood. I set up a church right in back of a crack house. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, man, I catch you while you're giving out cocaine, I give out scripture. 
Amen. Just, 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 just last week, we bought a new temple in Columbia, South Carolina. And, uh, there, and, and the real estate agent came down. The brothers was there working this week. And the real estate agent said, y'all bought a church down here? We said, oh yeah. He said, y'all must be strong. They come in this part of Columbia? I said, yes. I'm not a man that looked to go to suburbs. And I ain't worrying about that where the grass is green. I paint the sidewalk green. That's good enough for me. Wherever God put us, I say amen. amen. Doesn't matter to me where God put us. Amen. amen. I go where the grass is green. I go where there is no grass at all. I go where the street just littered with cocaine vials and liquor bottles. Thank God. And that's the way Nazareth, Nazareth. The Bible, that's why the Bible said, can anything clean come out of Nazareth? Nazareth is what we call a ghetto today. So this gospel that we preach go anywhere, everywhere. I'm not like a politician, you know, when they run for office, they just go in neighborhoods, you know, where there ain't no praise, no spray painting, no trash in the street and talk about they for everybody. I come every place I possibly can. Amen. I, I set up church any way possible. If, if, if we set up church downstairs while well, you have a party upstairs. Glory to God and let the gospel blast through the sheetrock until you come from upstairs and want to know what in the world is going on. Are you getting me? All right, let's go to work in the book of pain. Amen. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Isaiah chapter 28. And we'll start reading at verse 14. All right, follow me. Isaiah chapter 28 and at verse 14. All right. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye scornful men. In at verse 12. I want to get the lofty looks of men. I want to get all of it. At verse 12. All right. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And? And this is the refreshing. What else? Yet they would not hear. Uh -huh. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. That's the way it's coming to people now. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. You see, when we go into the word of God, we like to go into precept upon precept and then line upon line and break it down here a little and there a little so you don't walk away ignorant and blind and deaf and dumb. That's right. Because it don't do no good to, to carry the Bible. You don't understand it. Right. And you can read it all you want. That's right. But without understanding, reading don't help you none. All right. Here a little and there a little. Uh -huh. That they might go and fall backward. And? and be broken and snared and taken. Uh -huh. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. Hear God's word, ye scornful men. That rule this people which is in Jerusalem. What is it? Because ye have said. Ye have said. We have made a covenant with death. Huh. Making a covenant with death. I want to break this down line upon line. Making a covenant with death have more than one meaning. There are some people who have made a covenant with death in the form of making a covenant or an agreement with the grave based upon their lifestyle. They live a life that will kill them early. Out there wild and barbaric and foolish and silly and partying, drinking and rushing yourself to the cemetery. Making a covenant, a pact with death. Then death have another meaning. For the Bible says the sting of death is sin. So then you have folk that have agreed within their heart to just be wicked and be of the devil and be full of hell and ungodly. All right. Because ye have said we have made a covenant with death. Come on, son. I want folks to be able to hear you. Let's move quick. Just put the microphone on your lapel. Don't worry about that. Just leave it there and get it on your lapel. Not so much noise. Sorry, Pastor. God, you're a noisy reader. Come on, son. Because ye have said. <laughs> ye have said. We have made a covenant with death. You made a covenant with death. Have you ever made a covenant with sin? I want to say they ain't never made a covenant with sin. You said lie. Everybody in here made one. That's right. When you was out there sinning and disobeying God 
You made a covenant because a covenant is a pact, a promise. That's right. And when you made a promise to do wrong, you made a covenant with sin. That's right. And God come along by his mercy to break that covenant. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. We have made a covenant with death. And with hell or with And at, with hell. Are we at agreement? My God, look at here. Agreement. Imagine making an agreement, an agreement. with hell. Mm. And when the overflowing score shall pass through. This is how arrogant and self-righteous we become mm -hmm. when we're out there acting like a fool and when judgment going pass through, we say it won't come to us. It shall not come unto us. But what? For we have made lies our refuge. What is the world hiding under? And under falsehood. We have made lies our refuge. Our hiding place. And under falsehood. And under hypocrisy. Have we hid ourselves? Amen. Amen. All of us in here sometime in our life was hiding on the lies That's right. and falsehood. That's right. Lies and falsehood. Amen. Because anytime you're hiding under a teaching that contradict the word of God, that teaching is lies. Falsehood is that which is not real, but it projects the image of reality. And that's where church coming at. Church today is hiding under falsehood all around the world. They got steeples, they got crosses, they got people singing, they got people jumping and shouting, but some of these people are sincere. When I was in falsehood, man, I was serious. Yes, I did. I wanted to be right. And wanted to be saved. And I learned if you want to be right, even when you're in falsehood, the mercy of God will knock on your doorstep. And God will make a way for you to be right in his eyes. Falsehood, that which have a form of godliness, that which pretend to be godly, it sound right, it look right. It feels right. They profess that they know God. But it's not right. That's right. What is that? Now in the book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. What is it? They profess that they know God. Give William some more juice, please. And in, a, in a small room like this, give him juice. All right. I go back to the first one he took off. Come on, you get this straight so I can stop preaching and get you right. Get this straight. Use the other one that he had. Just throw it on your lapel. Just clip it on and turn it on. My God, clip it on, turn it on. Clip it on, turn it on. Leave the other one in your pocket. Just clip it on and turn it on. Just leave that down. Just read the Bible. They profess that they know God. Do you hear that? In Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess. That they know God. And what? But in works, they deny him. You ever had a dumb preacher? Amen. Yeah. All of us came from dumb preachers. That's right. I want to say, Pat, you're talking about my father. Your daddy was a dumb preacher. That's right. Any time he didn't stand on the word of God, he was a dumb, blind preacher. That's right. Any time you profess that you know the Lord, but in works you deny him, you don't know what you're doing. No. Now, let's look at how they deny God in works. They profess that they know God, but when it comes to doing God's work, they, deny they ain't got a clue who God is. No. If I knew who the Lord was, and I can know him no more than what's written. That's right. The Bible says whatsoever things are written of four times is written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and our hope come from God's everlasting word. That's right. So for me to be a wise master builder, a wise preacher, I got to build according, thank God, of the blueprints of the scriptures. That's right. For you to be a wise sister and a wise brother. See, uh, many of us have uh, a dumb salvation. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Somebody say, I've never heard of that before. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. A dumb salvation. A salvation put together by dumb folk. Mm. 
uh, a salvation that's preached by dumb folk yes. and a salvation that's obtained by dumb folk. Dumb is just another word for ignorant. That's all. Yeah? That's right. I mean, all of us was ignorant. Listen, when you bow your head and raise your hands, you got a dumb salvation. Amen. When you talk about I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I am saved, that's a dumb salvation. That's right. When you hold a hand of a no good bum that you think is a preacher and repeat some sinner's prayer like Williams used to do, you have a <laughs> dumb salvation. That's right. Ah! That's right. All right, thank God. Hey, man, I have to get you back for making all that noise. All right, come on, sir. They profess <laughs> that they know God. They profess that they know God. All right, thank God that they know God. But in work. But in what? They, in work. In work. They deny him. That's scary. Yeah. Religion all around the world claim that they're Christians. They love Jesus. They serve in Jesus until you investigate their works. Works. And then you'll find out they worse don't have nothing in common That's right. with Jesus. That's right. Do you hear this? Give chapter and verse again. Titus chapter 1 and at verse 16. What is it? They profess that they know God. They profess, they proclaim, they preach, they teach, they testify that they know the Lord. But in works. But when you evaluate what they're doing. They, in, in works. In works. They deny him. Hold it right there. Amen. Let's see. How God is being denied and work. When the people in churches are not properly taught, then they are victims of the stupidity of the preacher. That's right. Because this is why I don't blame the people for being blind and ignorant and misled. We are products of teaching. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It's like a car that comes off the assembly line. If that man's job is to use that rhythmic gun and put those bolts on the tires and he don't do his job, yeah. when that thing come off the assembly line, those wheels coming off. Right. I remember years ago when the uh, Lincoln Navigator came out and I had the Navigator and me and my family was on our way to church one day. The same week I put it in the shop, had my tires rotated and whatnot, got it out the shop. We was on our way to church. And three tires was on. And one just rolled right off. Lord. And all of us was in the SUV. It just rolled right off. Lord. I'm glad we wasn't on the expressway. Amen. The SUV is not designed to drive on three wheels. No. Your salvation is not designed to be partial. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So teaching is what makes us a complete child of God. That's right. Wrong teaching gives you incomplete salvation. A good example. If you're in a church and they tell you to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, but take you down in water, baptize you, but yet don't preach repentance. That's right. That's right. Now you see what I'm saying? That's right. Oh, they telling you to be baptized in the right name. Amen. And people coming up being baptized, little children being baptized and all that stuff. But nobody never repent. And that repentance. Nobody never repent. And when they don't repent, salvation is not being taught complete. For the Bible says in the 17th chapter of Acts that repentance and remission of, and sin remission of sins should be should preached. Be, should, be, should, be, should, be, should be. Should be. Should be preached. In his name. Where? Among all nations. Where should it start? Beginning at Jerusalem. So before the preacher actually preached baptism, he got to first preach repentance. Repentance. Now you see what I'm telling you. That's right. They profess that they know God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They profess that they know God, but in works. In works they deny him. They deny him. Being abominable. They are abominable. And disobedient. And they are hard headed And unto every good And when they come to do good. Reprobate. They are reprobate. reprobate. They are rebellious. So when they do it in part. That's why the word of God said when that wicked is perfect is come. 
that which is in part shall be done away. When a preacher come tell you, well, you need the Holy Spirit to, leave, to live right. You need the Holy Ghost to live right. But yet he don't tell you the proof that you have it. You got to speak in tongue like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's right. You never spoke in tongue, but yet you profess the Holy Spirit. You ain't got no Holy Spirit. No. You have to get it like they received it on the day of Pentecost. That's right. They was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. That's right. You got to get a complete package. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? Verily, verily. I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter in. What is being born of the water, Jesus? You got to repent of your sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. What is being born of the spirit, Jesus? Is when you feel with the spirit, by the spirit, from the spirit, which is the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongue and the spirit of the living God give utterance. Now, if I preach the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, but don't teach it like the word of God said, but teach it in part, then I'm going to tell you, well, yes, you got to speak in tongue, but you start off doing it. That's right. Do the best you can, then the Holy Ghost is going to come pick it up. That's right. I'm putting you on the falsehood. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to start doing is making up stuff. And now you're going to be out there, da, 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 And you're going to be wondering, well, when is the Holy Ghost going to take over? Da, 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 da. It has to be as the Spirit give us. That's right. That's why the Apostle Paul stopped in the Corinth and said, They that speak in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the Spirit? In the Spirit? He speaketh mysteries. But look at what Paul said. He speak not unto man. So when you're speaking tongue by the Spirit and you're not speaking to man, how can a man tell you when to speak, how to speak, where to speak, how long to speak? That's right. Anytime you got a so-called Holy Ghost, you only can feel when you see your preacher or when your preacher says, speak. And you dabba 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 You got the devil out of hell. He that speaketh hell. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Listen at this now. Back in Isaiah 28 and at verse 15. Solomon. For we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies. Our refuge. Lie, hiding under lies, women evangelists, women bishops. Yeah. Amen. I have a brother now who reached out to me from Georgia, came from a false apostolic organization, Shiloh <laughs> Apostolic Church down there in Jamaica, where the headquarters is. God bless your heart, Shiloh. Shiloh. The word of God is pounding Shiloh. Amen. And the people are coming out of there like the Egyptians hooked up with the Jews that come on out of Egypt. Amen. They're coming out of there because now they got a woman bishop as an overseer. You got to be a hell-bound, spineless, poor excuse of a man. That's right. Bless God to say you're the man of your house, but now you shrink down to tell in your church. Amen. Yeah? Amen. The Bible says what? Well, we have made lies our refuge. Uh, you got to be pitiful to hide under a lie and know it's a lie. Yeah. Now, if you come fill this room up with $3 bills, $4 bills, $7 bills, and it add up to a trillion dollars, why would I get happy? Amen. I still fall, son. Right. America don't have no $3 bills and $4 bills and $7 bills. No. That's vain happiness. That's right. This is what preachers have done to you that are here, you that are listening and watching. That's right. You got a vain joy. Amen. You got happy in vain over some fake salvation. Amen. Bow your head and raise your hand. The preacher say you're saved. You are set up. Yeah. Got baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The preacher told you you're born again. You ain't born again at all. That's right. Preacher told you when I count to three, you're going to speak in tongues. One, two, three. You're filled with cast. Casper, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. No, no. <laughs> you got Casper, the friendly ghost. That's right. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, we take God, what did he say? We have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge. Look at the lies that the lies. church hiding under divorce and remarry and flesh and blood in heaven and three gods in heaven and a little god and a big god and all this bundle of rubbish. That's right. They hide under lies. That's right. You hide under lies long time, 
you will start believing the very lie you're hiding under. Yes, you will. You right. keep lying to a person for years, right. they're going to defend it, yes, they're going to fight for it, yes. they're going to believe it, That's right. and when you bring them the truth, it's going to be hard to convert them. That's right. Huh? That's right. Listen, if we've been taught that one and one is seven, all of our life, and someone come and tell you, look, one and one is only two. No, it's not. One, you're going to have to work with that person and labor with that person before that person can accept the truth. That's right. Eh? Glory yes. to God, listen at this. For we have made lies our refuge. I, I don't want to hide under no lie. No. No, everything I want to believe, I want it to be godly, true, righteous, infallible, and I want it to always reflect the wisdom of God. Behold ye trust. Listen at this. And now in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, and at verse 8. Jeremiah 7, begin at verse 7. At verse 7. All right, son. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place. Yes. In the land that I gave to your fathers uh -huh. forever and ever. Behold ye trust. Behold ye trust. In lying words. That cannot profit. Amen. You viewers that are watching, why you keep watching these liars on social media and on television? Amen. What kind of words are they? Lying words. Oh, the Lord spoke to me and told me that he want me to have a jet. Then go fly on uh, United. That's right. Hey, man, go fly on United or American Airlines. That's right. Buy a ticket. Get on a jet. Fly Amen. wherever you want to go. But how hell-bound wicked these men are, they don't have no fear. Any time a man can stand in front of anybody and it's come out of his mouth, the Lord told him this, that, and the other. When he know the Lord didn't speak to him, he don't have no fear. That's right. Man, I'd be too scared to say God said something, and I know God didn't say it. Amen. I wouldn't want to lie on God. No way. God is not like a man. Right. Glory to God. Did you hear what he said? Behold ye trust. Ye trust. In lying words. You out there that got women preachers, you trust in a lie. That's right. You got women pastors and women bishops and women evangelists, you trust in a lie. Amen. You men that are watching that got ordained by some woman, your ordination is a lie. That's right. Your credentials is a lie. You that got baptized, baptized by a woman. Right name, wrong performance. It's all a lie. That's right. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Behold ye trust in lying you words. You trust and you get mad at me because you trust the liar. That's right. That's why I want the whole Bible in your face. That's right. Come on back to Bible. <laughs> Amen. Come on back to Bible. That's it. Ah. Amen. What did he say? Go ahead, take it. Come, on. Come on, son. They hold you trust in lies. You words. trust in lies. That cannot profit. You know, you won't get nothing out of it, but everlasting hell. Will you steal? Will you steal? Murder. Murder. I commit a I commit adultery. I swear falsely. I swear falsely. And burn incense and unto burn Baal. burn incense unto what? Un unto Baal. Unto Baal. And walk after other gods. And walk after other gods. Will ye know not? That's what the people are doing now. That's right. They're congregating in religion by the number. But one thing about the word of God is cutting its right. way through all these religions. That's right. I see the people coming out of all these religions all around the world. Catholic and Protestant and Christian scientists, apostolic, Pentecostal, non-denominational, Baptist, Buddhist, everything. Everything. Just come out had a man write me from Japan. He said he was a Buddhist all his life, but now he wanted to be baptized. Wonderful. And then, oh, yeah, glory to God. God in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. And man, he realized that Buddha couldn't help him. No. Uh, ain't no fat man with a bald head standing there like that. He can't help you. Yeah. Amen. He can't help you. That man got to come on and bring that clean head and go down in water. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is that? Well, we have made laws our refuge. All right, you that are here, are you in the church this afternoon? That's hiding under lies? Do your church tell you you can divorce? Mm. Do your church tell you nothing wrong with living together and not married? Amen. Do your church tell you the way to be saved is bow your head and raise your hands right. and accept Christ where you're at? Do your church ordain some of you women here to be little slick evangelists mm. and little loud mouth bishops? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Your church, where you go to, fella, amen, is homosexuality is allowed? Yeah. Is the preacher gay? Is the preacher gay, I said. I said, is the preacher gay today? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God, do you hear? We have made lies 
our refuge. Remain lying. Hey, do you got a bigot for a pastor? Go ahead. Do you got a racist for a bishop? Go ahead. Is your bishop telling you only black folk going to be saved? Yeah. Is your so-called pastor telling you if you're the only way to be right, you got to be white? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, you hear what they say? We have made lies our refuge. And you see, I have to break up everything because the word of God is a hammer. Go ahead. It's a hammer, and I got the hallelujah. I got to sling that hammer with all my God-given might. That's right. And wherever it lands, so be it. That's right. We have made lies our refuge. Now, bear in mind, if you're in the way when we swing, I ain't going to tell you to move. I'm going to tell you to stay right there. That's right. Stay there. That's right. Lord, thank God so I can hit you where you need to be hit. Do your preacher? Hey, listen. Hey, you that are out there, you that are here. Do your church that you are to in? Does it does this preach against you living together? Not married? Does it preach against you having all these babies and you ain't married? Does it preach against you out there in gay parades and all? Are, are, you, are you out there with your fake hair and tattoos all over your body and rings everywhere? Huh? You see, when you got that stuff, that's your past life. That's right. And we said, some folk now got tattoos on when they was out there sinner. Amen. Now they repent of their sins and baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Have the Holy Ghost. Now they can look. They look at when they was ignorant. That's right. And blind. And they can say, if I knew what I do now, I wouldn't be painted up like this. That's right. Huh? That's right. What do you say? Well, we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge. We have made lies. That hair ain't yours. You bought it from Walgreens. You, you're hiding under it. That's right. You're hiding under it. That's right. That's right. And them eyelashes ain't long, ain't yours. You got it out that little box from your medicine cabinet. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Hey, man, you know God didn't put all them holes in your body. Ahead, hey, God. man, you got your lips pierced, navel pierced, birth, well, your womb pierced, man got his anatomy pierced. What's the matter with you? You got so many pins in you, you're like a pin cushion. That's right. Huh? Amen. You made what? We have made laws our refuge. Hey, Amen. I was talking to two sisters today. God bless their heart that are here today for the first time, and they gave me their testimony. One sister said, my God, Pastor Jenny, you preached the word of God until terror hit me. She said, fear came upon my soul. She said, I took off everything. Amen. <laughs> And he said, he said, start getting out of everything. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sister, Sister Robin, raise your hand, Robin. God bless your heart. She said, my God, man. She said, I got so scared, I was ripping everything. She said, I had everything pierced. I had my lip, I was getting everything out. Hallelujah. And what I've got to clean you up. Amen. Give you an inheritance Hallelujah. among them that are sanctified. That's right. Hey. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can straighten you out like God can. That's right. And when God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God straightened you out, Hallelujah. it's the greatest day of your life. It's a wonderful thing Hallelujah. when you ain't got to hide under lies no more. That's right. You ain't got to hide under it no more. Amen. Here it is. God Almighty giving the whole world now. Amen. This is the message for the last day. That's right. This is the message for the last day. That's right. The message for the last days is to be holy or go to hell. Amen. Now, Amen. There's nothing in between. There is no middle man. It's to be holy or go to hell. That's it. There, there's no other alternative. That's it. Oh, thank God. What did he say? For we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge and under falsehood, under falsehood have we hid ourselves. There's so many people now hiding on the falsehood, got relaxed in it. That's right. On the choir, ushers, organ players, drummers, trumpet players, guitar players, playing on a church orchestra, on a church band, band and musician, they're just hiding on the, on, falsehood. On the falsehood. Everybody popping up, starting churches at will. That's right. Amen. Somebody told me that Beyonce started the church, which is Jay Z wife. And uh, 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 Ron, don't you bleep that. Amen. Don't you bleep that. Amen. They say Beyonce started a church and and uh, Jay-Z, Jay-Z, what? A church. Hiding on the falsehood. the falsehood. I want the world to know who I'm talking about. That's right. Hiding on the falsehood. Well, Pastor Jenny, she didn't sue you. That's good. Then maybe we can meet face to face and I can tell about Acts 238. That's right. What do I care? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jay. 
Jay-Z is nobody to me. That's right. But flesh and blood center that got to obey God or the hell he's going. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? And under falsehood. The world is under falsehood and God Almighty Hallelujah. has sent me to the world to pull you out of falsehood. That's right. And I'm laboring, glory to God, to pull every black and white Hallelujah. and brown and yellow Hallelujah. man and woman young and old, rich and poor, to get you out of this faith religion that you're hiding under, Go ahead. praying unto Mary. Mary don't know you. Bounding the statues. They don't see you. Right. Giving the sign of the cross to an image on the cross. And God said, make no image of me. Right. You're hiding under falsehood. falsehood. Going after a white oh. Jesus and a black Jesus. Hallelujah. Falsehood. Hallelujah. God just wants you to bow. Hallelujah. He said, every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto the glory of God the Father. For we have made lies of you. We have made That's what you're doing. That's right. Oh, yeah, any time you got three gods, you're hiding our lives. That's right. Church of God in Christ, I want you to hear this. Hallelujah. Church of God in Christ, Church of God in prophecy. Yeah. I want you to hear this. Anything the Bible is against, and you let it go on in your church, what did the Bible say? For we have made lies our refuge. <laughs> Lord, thank God. You preachers. You will come together, come together as a board of directors yeah. to discuss your fake religion. That's right. And how can we keep it going? Right. How can we keep it moving? Hallelujah. That's why preachers don't want people to learn the truth. Because when you learn the truth, that gives you power to question the preacher. That's right. You viewers that's watching us around the world and you that are here that come from these different churches, question your bishop. That's right. And why is it all these men can divorce and remarry in the church and they still say they're Christians? Right. Ask them why is it that homosexuals is able to run free in the church? Ask them why we got a rainbow flag on our church. Says where do homosexuality represent Jesus? Amen. Amen. Ask them. Amen. Ask them why you found a confederate flag on my church. Go ahead. Am I right? I go, said. go ahead. Ask them. Amen. Them. Why is the American flag in your church? We don't pledge allegiance to this country. We pledge our allegiance to God. And I ask him. Ask him. He's hiding on the falsehood. What did he say? But we have made lies of refuge. We made lies. Our refuge. Glory to God, our refuge. And under falsehood. And under hypocrisy. Have we hid ourselves. We hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the, the Lord saith God. The Lord God. Behold, I lay in Zion, I lay for, in a Zion for a foundation a stone. A tried stone. A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. precious. A sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. He that believeth shall we, we not. We're building on a sure foundation. Sure foundation. Yeah. Yes, Amen. That's why we can blow the trumpet loud. That's right. On a sure foundation. Sure foundation. When you build on a sure foundation, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ Himself Hallelujah. is the chief cornerstone in whom all the builders are fit to frame together, grow up unto a holy temple in the Lord. That's right. All right, you better give me the book of Corinthians, if you will. Now in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6. Follow me in your Bible. And we'll start reading at verse 14. Begin at verse 13. At verse 13. Uh -huh. Now for a recompense in the same. Yes. I speak as unto my children, uh -huh. for ye also be ye also enlarged. All right. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, if you believe God's word, yeah. you're not gonna get along with the unbeliever. No. I don't care if the unbeliever is your bishop, your pastor, your father. That's right. That's right. Any time the word of God open your eyes, there will be peace no longer. Amen. No, 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 no. You're going to find husband and wife at odds, yeah. brothers and sisters at odds, in laws at odds, right. and pastor and deacon at odds. That's right. What did he say that? We're be not unequally be yoked together. Be not unequally yoked together. With unbelievers. Amen. Be ye not. Do you hear this? Be ye not unequally yoked together. Now you that are here, and you that are listening. Why in the world are you trying to make wrong right? That's right. Yes. That's right. It doesn't matter how much you love your organization or love your preacher. You're supposed to be more loyal to God yes. than any 
loyalty to a preacher or organization. That's right. My loyalty is to God. That's it. Amen. And when your loyalty is to God, brother, you can fight freely everything under the sun. Amen. You're not worrying about what people say, how they feel, whether they hate you, whether they love you, you find what either. I get joy when people write me cussing me out. It makes me feel good. Huh? When I was in Detroit a few weeks ago, a man dropped a letter off at the police station, wanted me, uh, he wanted to do some harm to me. Amen. And just so happy he dropped it off and left. And the detective that got the letter was a television viewer, but the man didn't know it. They got in contact with me through my secretary and said, tell Pastor Jennings you better be careful because uh, they want to do him harm here in Detroit. That made me so happy. It made me feel so good because the man gripe was about the word of God. Yeah. Huh? Amen. I don't know the man. I wouldn't know him if I saw him. I didn't do anything personal. All I did was obey God and preach the gospel. That's it. There's one thing about the Bible. It, it, it brings the devil up in folk. That's right. Huh? That's right. And then sometimes the devil be in there all I comfortable and, you know, all, all resting. Do you remember back in the 60s and 70s, they had this thing called Jiffy Popcorn? Yeah. You know, and you put it on the stove and move it around. And you, when you move it around, it swell up. That's the way folk is. When the word of God get in them, that devil in them start moving them around. They swell up, get upset, huffing and puffing and mad. That's right. My God, man, I, I, I get thousands of letters every day. Not just every week, every day. Glory to God, people are thankful for this message by the thousands and people hate it by the thousands. Amen. But one thing about it, the same thing you fighting, you're going to have to obey. That's right. You know, you one thing about God, he's the only one you cannot outrun. That's right. You can run. Run much as you want. Cuss now. Get your steam off, but brother, you're going to bump into God. Oh, yes. What is that? Be not unequally yoked together Be with an unbeliever. Unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. For what fellowship has what righteousness? Fellowship. Has righteousness. Has righteousness. With unrighteousness. Now, anytime your mother wants to be a preacher, that's unrighteous. Unrighteous. And here the Bible said, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use of authority over the man, but to be in sound with all subjection. Y'all not going to get along. No. Y'all going to keep butting heads. That's right. Every time your mama get in the pulpit, you're going to walk out the church. That's right. And if you don't do it, you're a hypocrite to sit there. Amen. I don't care if your wife is supposed to be the preacher. Go ahead. That's another thing, you weak, pitiful men. You're the assistant pastor to your wife. You know you're truly, you, you're the devil's dearest. <laughs> Thank God, you're so messed up. You're the devil's dearest. Here is the Bible speak plain that if the if the wife wants to know anything, ask the husband at home. So how in the world did you end up being the assistant pastor to your wife? My Lord, you're the devil's dearest. Huh? What fellowship? What fellowship? Has righteousness and righteousness with unrighteousness. Now, we don't fellowship. With false churches. No. If you don't believe the Bible, you ain't preaching in here. That's right. No, you're just not doing it. I come to you and preach. I come to you and preach. This is a holy wrecking crew. That's Amen. Right. We'll come to your church and blast it to the ground. I don't preach for money. I, not, I don't want an offering from you. So I'm not coming in there counting the amount of money I can get. I come in here and count the amount of souls we can save. That's it. Huh? That's right. Pastor Jennings, you mean to tell me when people call you to preach, you don't take an offering? I don't want none. Because see, preachers got the illusion that they can hold another preacher hostage with money. No, I come preach free. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can't hold me hostage with nothing. I come preach free. It gives me joy to see your soul get splattered with the word of God. And then when we ask who wants to be baptized, you come up, I surrender. Go ahead. Okay, you might as well give up. I don't care who you are. You might as well give up. That's right. Young man, young woman, you might as well give up. You might as well get ready to give up your wild street lifestyle. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. Go ahead, take God. What did he say? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship? Anytime you want to do right and someone wants to do wrong, y'all going to bum heads. Okay. 
When that girl make it up in her mind to get off her back and let them fellas stop planting seed in her, none of them they're her husband. That's right. She gonna have an argument. Oh yeah. Well, I thought you was my boy. Nah, 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 nah. I wanna give my life to God and live holy. Oh, you wanna be one of them holy roller church goers now? Yeah. All right, let me roll for Jesus. That's right. I roll with you ten years, now let me roll for God. That's right. Eh? That's right. Oh, right, take God. Do you see what I'm driving? Well, what fellowship? What fellowship? Has righteousness with unrighteousness. Fellowship is when you get along. And when, and when you start wanting to walk with God, you used to fellowship with your fellows on the corner. Y'all yeah. you used to sit there and drink your liquor, drink your Budweiser, but now, here you done repented of your sins and the word of God start to convict you. It start to convict you. Like my brother here gave that beautiful testimony, it touched my heart. He said how he never listened to nobody. Never listened to his father, never listened to his mother. And here is God watched over him all his life. <laughs> I want to say, well, he may, he, he may think, well, Pastor Jennings, what did I do to deserve this? Nothing. Nothing. In fact, none of us did anything to deserve it. That's right. It's just an act of mercy. You see, God saw him here where he knew nothing about being here. God saw all of you here where you knew nothing about being here. Go hold on. He know them that are his. He know you. Oh, right. thank God, he know you. He, he, you're out there drinking and gambling and smoking. But here's God knowing all things. He can look at a drunk and see that drunk one day on his knee. Why he got the bottle in his hand? He can look at that prostitute and see that prostitute one day. Take God, what did he say? Oh, what fellowship? What fellowship? That's righteousness. You see, when the word of God comes, the Bible comes several times. That's why the Bible is called a sword. It's the several times. Then it's called an axe. It's laid at the roots. That way, when you take an axe and lay it at the roots, you destroy the source. It's called a hammer. That way you can break up what's stubborn. That's right. Huh? Amen. So that's what we use now. We use a sword, an axe, and a hammer. I got to use an axe so I can go to the source of the sin. That's it. And when I go to your source of the sin and hit it with the word of God, and then that sin can no longer nurture your soul. That's right. Huh? That's right. And then when it no longer nurture your soul, the sin can't grow in you. And if the sin can't grow, you can't commit it. Amen. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm telling you? Sometimes that sin makes you stubborn. So now I got to get the hammer. And start hitting you hard. Hard sound doctrine. And that's what preachers are afraid to use in the church. A hammer. They just want to use something to tap you. Right. And you looking at the preacher. You serious? <laughs> you serious? Here we come with the word of God. And here you and your second wife is together. And we come crush her. Yeah. Amen. She's laying in a chair. <laughs> What's the matter? I, I got to give you up. That's right. What happened? The word dislocated my heart. Amen. It hit me so hard. Amen. My heart is just dislocated. That's right. Hey. That's right. God, I said, Hallelujah. I can dislocate your love for sin. Oh, yeah. It breaks up your foundation. That's right. And when it break up your foundation, he said, oh, I will. Tell me that. And it will take off. And it will. Tell me, call a way of holiness. That's right. God want to put you on a straight way. Straight, straight. straight. And narrow is the way. That's right. He wants you on a straight path. That's it. What did he say, son? But what fellowship? What fellowship? Have righteousness from righteousness. And when the word of God come and open up your eyes, Go you're going to have a fight with your organization now. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm looking at many people now. Came out of something. Amen. We all came out of something. Oh, yes. And sometimes we end up fighting those that are still in it. That's right. What did he say? What fellowship, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And righteousness with that which is not right. And what communion what, has light with what dark? Communion. What communion, communion have light with dark? 
What kind of communication you gonna have? Amen. You know, the moment you start talking about the word of God to an unbeliever, an argument gonna ensue. Yeah, that's right. So sometimes the unbeliever say, "Look, don't talk about the Bible, because we ain't gonna agree. Let's right. let's not talk about the Bible. Let's talk about business and and let, how, how is your family?" Amen. I remember when I was a kid, and the Jehovah Witnesses would come up the neighborhood. I couldn't wait. I'd be in my mother's vestibule, just looking out the window. And then, I, then sometime I'd go to the porch, and they'd be going from house to house. And sometimes the people in the neighborhood would say, you see that red and house, that red and white house over there? You see that young man standing over there? His name is Nicky. Go over there to him. <laughs> I kid you not, the people in the neighborhood would tell the Jehovah's Witness, go talk to Nicky. And I was right there on the porch, just wait. <laughs> They come to come because they, they would come with their Bible, and I would take their Bible and show them it's one God. And they come try to convince me it's no hell. Listen, even I wish that was true. That's right. And there's no hell. I may well be in New York, but not here. Amen. <laughs> and yeah. If there's no hell, I may well be in New York, but I wouldn't be in church. No. For what? There won't be no consequences for wrong. That's right. Hell is that consequences for sin. That's and if there's no consequences for sin, there's no need for church. Amen. What did he say? And what communion has what light communion? with darkness? When you want to get right with God, family members, cousins, relatives, now you ain't talking the same talk you used to talk no more. That's right. You go to family reunion, and now they all smoking and drinking, you getting up walking away. That's right. You're getting up walking away. Well, uh, 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 Martha, where you going? Y'all smoking and drinking. I don't do that no more. Amen. I can't even sit among you. That's right. Mm -mm, no, I got to separate myself. Yeah. I got to separate myself. I got to get away from you. That's right. Do you hear this? For what fellowship has righteousness? What fellowship? Has righteousness with unrighteousness. When, you, when your family members want to cuss all around you, you got to put, hey, look, 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 uh, don't, uh, don't talk like that around me. Oh, you more you all churchy now? That's right. That's right. Respect it. Don't, don't talk like that around me. Amen. You don't sit back all quiet and shame. Well, I don't worry about what they're going to think of me. You didn't think that way and you was a sinner. No. And you was acting like a fool with them. That's right. You take a stand for the God you represent. Amen. What do you say, son? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Amen. When you stand for what's right, you're, you're going to get into a fight with your pastor, your bishop. Your evangelist, the first lady of the church, the overseer, you're going to end up fighting a whole lot of folk. That's right. All because you're standing for what's right. And you know what makes it so strange? The, most time it will be those who claim they already believe the Bible. Yeah. And then when you begin to really put the Bible on them, you'll find out they don't believe it. Amen. They just carry it. Yeah. Them the kind that profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. That's right. All right. And what communion has light with darkness? What communion has light with darkness? What communion? What communion? When false church want me to preach, I don't even give you offering. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, we don't give false churches offering. Yeah. All the followers of the truth of God if they ever accommodate us to, a, to any church to preach and that church don't stand for the word, we don't give them no money. No money. When they pass the offering plate to us, we keep it going. That's right. We don't even give you a penny. That's right. Because if we do, we strip to the hand of the evildoer. Amen. Why would I support women preachers in the Bible against it? Yeah. Why would I support same-sex marriage in the Bible against it? I remember when I was invited to a woman preacher's church, and she said she was an apostle. I didn't find that out until I got there. Yeah. And it was, uh, there were so many people that came, they couldn't even get in the building. We didn't even sit down to get the seats warm good until they came up with that. They got that offering plate. They, they came with some lucky dollar offering. I forgot <laughs> what they call it. But man, they passed that thing around and the people was looking at me. <laughs> I was sitting in the pulpit, I just said, wonderful. <laughs> uh, the members of the first church just kept the pan going. That's right. The man looked at me and said, Pastor Dennis, the people that came with you ain't giving no money. I said, we didn't come to give money, we came to preach. Amen. I said, you might as well just go on and let me preach because you ain't getting nothing out of us. That's right. You ain't get that goes to show you whether people really want the word or money. Really want the word or money? Like a man years ago, 25 or 30 years ago, there was a man from Jamaica, New York. I met uh, for the first time. He passed on now. We let him preach 
uh, one day in Philadelphia, and we didn't give him a speaker's offering. So when he went back to New York, he called me that Monday and told me how he enjoyed the service. He said, but I think you forgot something. I knew what he was going to say. I said, what was that? He said, you didn't give me an offering. I said, I didn't plan on giving you one. I said, I asked you to come preach, not to give you money. Amen. When I go somewhere to preach the gospel, I ain't worrying about your money. I come to save your soul. God be my help with God everlasting word. Don't misunderstand me. Take money for things to run. Because faith ain't going to burn these lights. We got to rent this place. <laughs> you, can go to, you can go to the owner and say, look, we believe in Jesus. He's going to tell you, I believe in money. <laughs> so we're going to have to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar. Right. And render to God the things that are God. Right. But I don't preach for money. No, sir. Amen. Amen. I get joy out of seeing men and women give up. And I don't look when you repent of your sins and are baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, you can't get baptized and go back to the false church you came from. Oh no, that's like washing a, a child and then all of a sudden you throw it down in mud. You don't do that. No. What did he say? And what communion has light with darkness? And, and what concord has Christ with blood? What? Or what part has he that believeth with, with an with an infidel. What? Or what part? What part? Has he that believeth? Has he that believe with an infidel? With an unbeliever. How is it that you and women preachers get along so good and you don't believe in them? What part? How is it you get along so good with three God worshippers? How can you go in a church and sing and clap and be a guest choir and you believe in one God for Trinitarians? That's right. What part? Why can a Baptist preacher come in a holy congregation and preach two gods? Amen. Amen. How can a so-called Jesus-only preacher baptize two ways? Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the name of Jesus Christ, any way you want it. God is not the author of what? Confusion. What part has he that believeth with an infidel? When you're an infidel, you're an unbeliever. That's right. We believe one gospel, one way, one standard. We don't swerve from that standard no. to get along with nobody. No, no. That's why people say that pastor didn't mean he don't have no love. Williams is reading from the love book now. Amen. This is the love book. Right. Read the love book, Williams. Or what part? This is the book of love. Or what part has <laughs> he that believeth? Yeah. This is the book of love. That's right. He's a lovely reader. <laughs> I'm, I'm your friendly neighborhood lovely preacher. Lovely preacher. I preach with love. We come to hit you and cut you and bruise you. Go ahead, then my God. love hits. <laughs> hey, man, then my love scratches and love. You know, when them bones get broke from the word, I love pain. Who <laughs> take God. What did he say? Or what part has he that believeth with It's lovely himself. to see your second husband leave. That's right. It's lovely to see your second wife leave. It's lovely to see you leave your false church. It's lovely to see you get fired from your position for being a fake pastor. That's right. It's lovely for that woman preacher to step out the pulpit and say, I want to be baptized. Amen. It's lovely to see all the members walk out of that church so they can be saved. That's right. It gives me a warm feeling. That's huh? right. It's lovely. Amen. Come on, son. And what agreement has the temple of God? What agreement had the temple of God? With idols. We don't have, that's why we don't have no images in here. We don't have no idols in here. You got little statues in your house. You think it's Jesus. That's not Jesus. No. I don't know who it is. It may be John Lennon, but it ain't Jesus. <laughs> that's right. Huh? That's right. Not, I don't know who that fellow is on your cross around your neck. Or that fellow over your wall next to Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy, them old pictures that them faded. I don't know who it is, but I know it's not Jesus. That's right. Huh? That's right. There's a fella, I think he's in Taiwan, somewhere in Asia, who says he's the son of man. Can't think of his name, but I would love to get a hold of him and break him down with the hammer of the word. Yeah. Uh, there's another fella that says he's an apostle in Africa supposed to have been listening to me and went out trying to duplicate what we preach but uh, he ain't sticking to the word of God and he says he says one thing about it if God don't send you a lie gonna come out he said he is the two witnesses that Zachariah talked about in fact let me answer that question real fast and I get back to coming out of falsehood I want to break down who the two olive trees are yes. give me the book of Zechariah then give me the book of Revelation because I got letters coming in from overseas and here in America asking me to please explain because this preacher here saying he's the two witnesses rolled up in one 
You tell that preacher in Africa to come here so I can take the machete of the gospel and cut the witnesses out of them. That's right. In the book of Zechariah. I'll make them lift that stuff up. Amen. You see, these men want to be bigger than what the Bible calls. Yeah. These two witnesses are two men that have been. That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. And yet false prophet in Africa is not them. No. The Bible ain't never said that one man will come and will be the two witnesses rolled up in one like he's a taco. That's right. Not that. That's right. Not that. That's right. All right, let's break it down. Give me Zechariah. I'm going to tell you who they were. Now in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4 and at verse 11. People get caught up in anything. I don't care if you do baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. If you get part of it and don't want to walk it all over, you will go to hell even with the right baptism. That's right. What is that? Zechariah, chapter 4 and verse 11. Right. Then answered I and said unto him. Then answered I and said unto him. What are these two olive what trees? What are these two olive trees? Upon the right side of the candlestick. Olive trees. Olive trees. Olive. 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 You know, from the olive plant, you get olive oil. Yes. So there was two olive trees, which let you know there was two witnesses, and the two witnesses were anointed. That's right. Because from the olive plant, you get olive oil, and you use olive oil to anoint. Right. All right, come on. What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick? What are what? What are these two olive trees? Where? Upon the right side of the candlestick. Where else? And upon the left side thereof. Where else? And I answered again and said unto him. Unto him. What be these two olive branches? What be these two olive branches? Which through the two golden pipes. Wait a minute. Which through the two golden pipes. Golden pipes. Empty the golden oil. Let me break that down now. You know, the pipes of a man is the throat of the man. Each witness or each prophet or each master have golden pipes. That's right. What do you mean golden pipes? Valuable, precious. And what come out of it? Which, what be these which two come olive out branches? Of it? Which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil. What come out of it? Golden oil. What come out of it? Golden oil. That's what got to come out. The preacher oil got to come out. What you mean? The anointing of God. That's right. You see, when the anointing of God come out of him, it'll fall on you. Right. It got to be golden gold oil. Because precious is valuable. That's right. Thank God is priceless. That's right. Hey, what be oh, these two olive branches? What be these two olive branches? What be these Hallelujah. two olive branches? Thank God. These two olive branches. It's through the two golden pipes. It's through the two golden pipes. Empty the golden oil. Empty the golden oil. Out of themselves. Out of themselves. And he answered and said, Knowest thou not what these are? Do you be? know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. I don't lord. know it, my lord. Then said he, These the? are the two anointed ones. I told you. <laughs> these are the two anointed ones. That stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Wait a minute. They stand by who? By the Lord of the whole earth. All right. Now, let's get the book of Matthew. I want to show you where, when these two stood by the Lord of the whole earth. Whole earth. Amen. Think of it. Here's Moses prophesied by God's permission and says the image of the Lord he shall behold. That's so right. Here you had Jesus up on a mountain of mountain. transfiguration. That's right. And the two former ones who once exist, That's thank right. God, who was yet one was translated and the other was buried by the Lord. Now in the book of St. Luke chapter and 9. All right. In Luke chapter 9, we'll start at verse 29. What is that? And as he prayed, as he prayed, the fashion of the countenance the was fashion altered. Of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was his white raiment and glistening. And began to shine. And behold, behold they talked with him two men two men which were Moses which, that, which was Moses and Elias those are the two olive trees that's right those are the two anointed that's right one shut up heaven yeah. and the other by God's permission brought signs and wonders that's right all right and the whole they talked with him two men uh -huh. which were Moses and Elias they talked with who with, and, and behold they talked with him they talked with Jesus two men and what does Zacharias say they would do they will stand where? These be the two anointed ones yeah. that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And what did they do in the book of Luke? And behold, they talked with him two men. Jesus is the Lord of the whole earth. That's right. And they stood there. That's right. Talking to him. Now give me the book of Revelation. Now in the book of Revelation chapter 11. All right, you, you, you false prophet. I forgot the name of this false prophet. But if you're listening, you are lying to say that That's you are Moses and Elijah. You're not the two olive branches. And if I got a hold of you, I make you lick it up. I take a branch and sweep that lie out of you. That's right. And I do it with the Bible. Yes, I will. That's right. There's nothing but a false prophet down there. Well, you shouldn't bother him. He's an African. I don't care if you are an African. Right. What is that? I take the word of God and mula, 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 hula, mula, mula, you with the Bible. Right. Huh? Right. Yes, I will. Glory right. thank God. And I do that. That's right. I don't care nothing about you. I don't have an African gospel. I just got the gospel. 
Amen. And the book of Revelation chapter 11. Hallelujah. And we'll start at verse 1. Give chapter and verse again. In Revelation chapter 11 and we'll start at verse 1. What is it? And there was given me a reed like unto a there rod. Was given to me a reed like a rod. And the angel stood saying rise and measure yeah. the temple of God. And measure the God's temple. And the altar and them that worship therein. Then what? But the court which is without Don't the temple leave that. out and uh -huh. measure it not. Yes. What is given unto the Gentiles. Uh -huh. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 in two months. Yes. And I will give power. I will give power. Unto my two witnesses. And you got it again. I will give power to my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. That will add up to almost three years and a half. Clothed, right. clothed in sackcloth. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees. These are the two anointed. And the two candlesticks. And these are the, listen, not only are they olive trees, but they're also candlesticks. candlesticks. What do you mean are the candlesticks? The preacher got the light of God in them. Mm. Yeah? That's right. I mean, it, it takes the God to put the light or his wisdom or knowledge in the preacher to guide us out of darkness. That's right. Listen, that's what a candlestick is for, is to lead and guide you out of darkness. That's and right. remember, the candle got to be in front of you. Yeah. You got to follow the candlestick. That's right. That's Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's right. All right. These are the two olive trees. These are the two olive trees. And the two candlesticks. And these are the two candlesticks. Standing before the God of Standing. the Glory to God Hallelujah. before the God of the earth. Of the earth. And if any man will hurt them. If any man try to hurt them. Fire proceeded out of their mouth. Fire come out of their mouth. That means they speak with power. They speak with authority. Did not God tell Jeremiah, I will make the people wood. wood. And I will make thine words fire. That's right. And they shall devour them. Right. Fire coming out of their mouth. That don't mean they're going to breathe actual fire. But the fire represents the power of God. Or the word of God. Or the speech of God. That's why Paul said the spirit speaketh expressly. Amen. Fire coming out the preacher's mouth. Mm, Alright. Right. And if any man will hurt them, if any man will hurt fire them. proceedeth out of their mouth. And what? And devoureth their enemies. Uh -huh. And if any man will hurt them, if any man will hurt he them, must in the same manner be killed. Alright. These have power. Listen that this now. Amen. These have power. Have power. To shut heaven. That's Elijah. Amen. Huh? That's right. So said, but it didn't give their name. Jesus said, I know you by your fruit. By your fruit. You got to know them by the works. That's right. These have power to shut heaven high. That, that it rain not That's in the Elijah. days of their prophecy. Wait a minute. When? That it rain not. When? In the days of their prophecy. That means when they was alive. That's right. When, he, he, uh, when they was alive, they passed life when they was in the flesh. That's right. It rained not in the days of their prophecy. That's Elijah. All right. And have power over water. Have powers over water. And turn them to blood. That's Moses. <laughs> they said them are the two witnesses that's right glory to God all right let's go back to where we were I just want to straighten that, out. that out all right let's have it back in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and at verse 16 uh -huh. and what agreement what agreement at the, the temple, temple of God, God with, idols. with idols for ye are the temple of the living God I don't want you to think about this here you are the temple of the living God as God had said, you are the temple of the living God. You belong to God. That's right. You God own you. That's right. And if God own you, He got the right to tell you what to do, what not to do, what you allowed to do, what you can't do, and what you better do. That's right. Huh? Amen. It's like a person that go to jail. You're not your own. <laughs> person go to jail. You ain't your own. When they open that cell and say, "All right, everybody out," you can you can tell them, "Well, look, I don't get up this early. Get out of there." That's right. Get up. That's right. You can't tell them it's too early. No. You got to get up when they say get up. Go to work when they say go to work. Eat when they say eat. Now, hear the Apostle Paul in the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. He said, I, Paul, the prisoner Jesus of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If we all been captured, arrested by the God of heaven, now we are prisoner. That's right. If we are prisoner, we are not our own. We have to do what God say do, how he say do it, and with whom and where. That's right. He said, exact no more than what's upon it. For ye are the temple. The Bible says what? Ye are the temple. Ye are the temple. Of the living God. Do you hear this? Amen. What did he say there? Back in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 16. Ye are the temple. For ye are the temple of the living God. And God didn't make your temple to blow smoke. No. God didn't make it to pollute your temple with liquor. That's right. God didn't make your temple, mister, to be switching like a woman. Go ahead. God didn't make your temple, woman, to be walking hard like a man. That's right. God didn't make you to pierce yourself. Amen. God didn't make you to walk around with long hair, brother. That's right. God didn't make you to cut your hair, sister. Yeah. Not at all. You are the temple. You belong to God. Of the living God. Who is God. 
All right, go back to where you were. Still in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. For ye are the temple of the living God. And what? As God has said. As God has said. I will dwell in them. I will dwell in you. And walk in them. And walk in you. And I will be their God. Look at here. Do you know how beautiful it is to have God dwelling in you? That's right. Huh? I will dwell in God them. says, I will dwell in you. And walk in them. Wouldn't you rather have God in you than anything else? Amen. I mean, think of it. God can think enough of a piece of flesh that he decided to dwell in it. Well, and then call it his own. That's right. He said, I bought you with a price. Right. Well, Pastor General, why do women cover their head? Because they belong to God, and God told them, cover your head. Yes. If you pray or prophesy, have your head uncovered, you dishonor your head. That's right. And if God said it, you got to do it. Yes. Well, why is it your men, when they pray, they don't have their head covered? Because God said, if a man cover his head and he pray, he dishonor him. That's right. That's right. If God said it, you got to obey. Got to obey. Amen. Well, Pastor General, don't you think, I, don't, I, I ain't got nothing to do with it. No, no. Don't put me in it. No. I'm just your mailman. Bring you the letter. You got to read it and obey it. That's right. Huh? I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. And walk in them. And walk in them. And I will be their, their God. I will be their God. And they shall be my and people. And they shall be my people. Wherefore? Wherefore? Come out from among them. All right. Come out. You that are here, you that are watching Hallelujah. around the world, Hallelujah. and you that are listening on social media and watching, and listening on radio and television, God said, Wherefore come out. I want this to be good for all the people that criticize me when I tell you leave your church. That's right. Listen, if your house burning down, do you, would you stay there? You would leave, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes, your church and your religion is on its way to hell and all of them that are in it. I'm telling you to come out before the Lord destroy everything. That's right. God says. Wherefore come out from among them. And do what? And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Saith Geno Genesis. Saith the Lord. Any time your eyes come open, you're going to be separate from these religions. That's right. Come on out of them. What? All of them. Amen. Pack up and leave. You ain't got to take your hymn book. Leave it there. That's right. That's right. You can leave your hymn book there. Leave your choir robe there. You ain't even got to write them a letter. Amen. Just, you didn't write them a letter to go there. You didn't write him a letter. Can I be a member of your church? There was a uh, preacher that contacted me from the Church of God in Christ before I came here. And uh, he said the Church of God in Christ is starting a new thing now that they are charging each follower membership fee. Can you imagine the cash flow? I said, what? I never heard of that. Membership fee. Yeah, you got to renew your membership ever so often. You know, fifty dollars or a hundred dollars a head. Ha! That's really that's a really good rich a get rich scheme, isn't it? Amen. So I asked him. I said, "Well, suppose uh, you don't pay your fee." He said, "Do you know more a member?" I said, "Then don't pay your fee." <laughs> huh? Hey man, and the only thing you got to give God to be in His church or in His body is your whole life. Right. Yeah. You you got to do is come without money. I'm without price. That's right. A membership fee. That's that. Devil, why the hell? Amen. Huh? Amen. All right. Wherefore, come out from among them. You hear God talking. Anytime a church don't stand for holy teaching. Come out. Stay there and fight them. Come out from among them. Stay there and argue with them. Come out from among if them. you talk to the bishop about what the word of God say he don't want to change, get out of there. Come out. Get out of there. Pray for him on the outside. That's right. Huh? That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I, got, I just got ordained. So what? Come out. What big deal? What did you mean to tell me your title is more important than eternal life? You go to a church because the preacher is famous? Who cares? That's right. Hey Amen. The brothers were showing me, a, a brother and the brothers texted me a clip. Uh, ESPN. And, uh, it was a, uh, I think, uh, uh, some coach and some other fellow in the program, they was talking, and then they got to talking to spiritualism. And do you know, they started talking about Pastor Jennings and the truth of God. He said, Pastor Jennings, he, 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 he said, you ever heard of Pastor Jennings? He said, yeah, I heard him. He said, he debated the nation of Islam. He said, yeah, that's classic. He said, now he's one of them strong preachers of Christianity. Let me correct that. Our religion is not Christianity. I don't believe in Christianity. Did you hear what I just said? That's right. Think of that. Here's a man who believes in being like Christ, but don't believe in a religion called Christianity. You know why? It's not in the Bible. That's right. 
There's not a scripture in there called Christianity. No. That, that's an acronym. Mem, abstract that from the word Christ. Like apostolic came from the word apostle. It's not in there, a religion called Christianity. No. You liars. Amen. It's not there. Well, what is your holiness? Oh, yes. yes. We're well, holy. Yes. Yes. God ain't told you to be anything else. Amen. No. Christianity is a racist religion. Yes, it is. Christianity is a racist religion. That's right. Well, that man said Jesus was racist. No, I didn't. I said Christianity is racist. Amen. Did Jesus tell you what he taught was Christianity? No. Not at no time. No. Bible says they shall be called the holy people. God was holy. God is holy. That's all Jesus is, holy. holy. He makes the holy people. We got the holy word. We received the holy ghost. That's right. We got the Holy Spirit. Amen. They got a holy church. Right. Bible call it a holy nation. nation. What's it to call a royal priesthood? That's right. Everything points to holiness. Right. Nothing points to this man-made rubbish that the devil put together. And I'm laboring God be my helper to dismantle. Go ahead. Man. Dismantle this fake puzzle That's that right. men put together. Your glue is not strong enough. That's right. I want to break it to pieces so you can know what you're talking about. You get up and tell the people, well, my religion is Christianity. Somebody asks you, well, where in the Bible says that? You're going to look like a fool. I know it's in there. No, it ain't. But I thought I read. No, you didn't. But I thought I saw it. Liar. <laughs> but I remember reading. No, you don't. All you saw in the Bible was the word Christian. Christian is a person. Right. Who strive to live according to the life of Christ. That's it. Christianity is the name of a religion. And man gave it that name. That's right. Not the prophets, not Jesus, nor the apostles. Man gave it that name. That's right. Jesus ain't give it that. No. You're gonna stick to what Jesus said. That's it. So the Bible advised all of them to do what? Wherefore come out from a month. All right, all right, Africa, Europe, England, Japan, China, Taiwan, and everything, and South America, Canada, all across America. New York! Come out. Everything in New York got to do what? Come out from a monk. Come on out, the so-called apostolics, the Pentecostal, the non-denominational. Leave the churches that baptize you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Come out from the churches where the women run weeks for Bible, what preaching, lying on the Holy Ghost, saying God called and some of them preach the gospel and kicking a miniskirt all up in the air, and the men there looking at it. That's right. Come out. You underwear watching men, leave that church. I'm out from among them. <laughs> what is that? I'm out from among them. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out looking at that sissy preacher running revival all week. That's right. With his lips shining like armor all on a tire. Amen. Come out. Come out, I said. Come out from among them. Come out from the church where the woman wife, the preacher's wife is the first lady. You know there's a church, I think it was in New Jersey or Philadelphia. Normal, they have the first lady. This fella got the first man. I mean, the first lady is bad enough. He put a whole spin on it. First man. He made his boyfriend the first man. And he's a bishop. Ain't got a following. That's the devil out of hell. Amen. And when I preach like this, they say, you see that? He's homophobic. Well, if I'm homophobic, God must be homophobic. That's right. Uh, Lot must have been homophobic. Amen. God burnt Sodom and Gomorrah and consumed it. Okay. Because men wanted men. Listen, it's a, listen, it's a sin to fornicate. But if you're going to do wrong, at least do wrong right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Some folk got to scratch their head on that one. Pastor <laughs> Jenny, but wrong is wrong. I know wrong is wrong, but there's a right way to do wrong. That's right. What do you mean? If you smoke a cigarette, it's wrong to smoke, but you don't put the burnt part to your mouth. That's right. That's right. 
Do you? Drinking liquor is wrong. But you don't try to drink the bottle with the cap on it. When you fornicate the wrong way, you a man, you get a man. That's the wrong way. When you, you fornicate the right way, you're not married, you get a woman. That's right. And when you fornicate with a woman, that's not called abomination. It's called fornication. But when a man is a man, it's a whole different category. Now you're called abomination. What is it you men see in another man? No curves, no nothing. Am I right, I said? When I was 14 years old, I first saw my wife. We, my, uh, we was coming home from church one day, and she lived next door to my cousin. We got our, I dropped our cousin off, uh, and she went in the house. And I, so when I first saw my wife, 14 years old, she was out there jumping double dutch. Man, I saw curves. <laughs> and what she had on made it very easy to see it. She wasn't saved either. Praise God and pass the ammunition. <laughs> I saw curves. Man, if I saw someone look like me, I wouldn't even turn my head. <laughs> I don't care if he was jumping or jumping, 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 jumping. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You understand? Yeah. But man, when, when I saw her jumping, 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 Eric, it looked like slow motion. Jumping double duck. Hallelujah. You get what I'm telling you. Yeah, you got these sick, hell deserving men blowing kiss at each other, chap lips. My Lord, my Lord. Watch the devil out of hell, God knows. Amen. And there are TV stations that's upset with me because I preach this, and they don't want me to do it. They don't want me to do it. They're trying to pass law in America that if you preach against homosexuality, you go to jail. And I told Congress, you can start with me. <laughs> the only way I stop, I'm dead. That's right. Nikki dead. That's the only way I stop. I'm dead. Otherwise, in that, the Bible said, woe was me if I preach not the, not gospel. the gospel. Every man of God got a woe behind us. Amen. Eh? Amen. I said, woe, he just got to do it. All right, Williams, what do you say? Wherefore, come out from a mother. Leave your church. Who? Everybody. Amen. Amen. Come Leave out. your church. I don't care how much you love it. If it don't stand for the word of God, come out from among them. And, and be separate. Be separate. Say it who? Say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. I touch not the unclean thing. Don't go back no more. And I will receive. Wait a minute. If, if you leave. And don't bother them no more. The law say he'll do what? And I will receive but you. But the preacher said you're going to be an enemy of Christ. I will receive you. But the preacher said you will be lost. I will receive you. God will take care of you. That's right. I will be a father unto you. Wait a minute. When you leave the false church, God not only say he'll take care of you, what else he'll do? I will be a father unto you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You hear what God says? I will be a father unto you. You preachers that are watching me around the world who try to threaten your members that leave yeah. because they want to come walk with the truth of God, be a man. Yeah, right. Don't threaten them. Come jump on me. That's right. We're the one preaching by God's permission. That's right. I take the hammer of the gospel and take that fake stuff yeah. you have and drive it back from where it comes. Amen. You people that's being threatened by your preacher and the preacher getting members of the church you left to call you, to hound you, and pressure you, don't worry. God the Father got you. That's right. He got your back. That's we will be a father unto you. He got your back. God said, I will be a father. I will be a father unto you. God said, He'll be a father to you. And ye, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. I'm telling the sons and the daughters, leave the churches. That's right. Leave. Forget your position. Leave it. Hallelujah. Moses said, you that's on the Lord's side, come to me. That's right. Preachers out there threatening folk, trying to scare them up. If you leave, you're going to die. If I stay, I'm going to die. What's the big deal? That's right. Eventually, one day, be the Lord's will, I'm going to die anyway. That's right. The 
If I'm going to die, let me die in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The preachers are terrified. They are terrified because brother holiness is sweeping the nation. Isn't it? Amen. I mean, it's sweeping the nation. It's moving. Hallelujah. Amen. God Almighty just got it moving all over. I'm telling you, during the uh, Holy Convocation, when we was telecasting, we webcast at the same time. So everyone around the world is able to see it. And when we asked who want to be baptized and the people came within the building to be baptized, but Demo and I said, uh, you that's watching on social media that want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I said, I can't see you, but you stand up on your feet too and let us know. Well, one of the brothers who worked with the team was on the computer on the chat room and he said his computer started binging, binging, binging. He said, he called, he said Pastor Dennis, when you made that statement, over 800 requests came in. <laughs> to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Over eight, in one night, over 800 requests came in. Wonderful. I want to be baptized. Wonderful. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Go with Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then a man born can stop it. That's right. Wonderful. Not a man born. When something is of God, who can overthrow it? God literally said, let you find yourself happily. Fight against God. God is talking to you, viewer, and watcher, and listener. And you got to hear. God said, come out from among them. Pastor Jennings, the Bible said, wherefore come out from among them. Leave. Leave it. Leave all the so-called apostolic. Leave them. Leave the Pentecostal, the non-denominational. Just take the choir roll balls at rehearsal. Pull it off. That's right. And leave. Come out from among them. Get off the choir. That's right. Drop your minister's credentials. Amen. Be a servant for God. That's it. This is a life and death situation. That's right. And a heaven or hell journey. That's right. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. That's right. If God be God, serve him. Serve him. If Baal or the devil be God, Serve him. Anybody want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, including them from last night, all of you stand on your feet, please. Glory to God. All of you that want to be baptized, go to the back. All of you want to be baptized, go to the back. Hey, you ain't, if you ain't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not born again. You're not saved. Nobody. Here, 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 here. Nobody is saved unless you repent of your sins. You got to repent of your wrong. And go down in water. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You must do it. No getting away from it. If you bow your head and raise your hands, you're not saved. You've been bamboozled. You've been took. You've been led astray. You've been lied to. Yeah. Everything got to be sorry about the wrong. And if you want to give your life to Christ the right way, you got to go down in the water. Yes. Do you see them folk? Viewers, viewers, viewers. This is what you got to do. Come on, young men, young women. Come on and get right with God. Come on and get right with God. Come on. Young man. You've been out there long enough. Come on. Young woman, come on. Hallelujah. Come on! Old man, old woman, come on! You've been out there dancing and partying and acting like a fool and giving the devil all these days and weeks and years out there, sinner. Now it's time to give your life for God and obey Him. Repent! Repent and be baptized! Repent! Repent! What you mean? You gotta be sorry about your wrong. Hallelujah. You want God to change your wicked life so you can have a chance to escape everlasting hell. Hallelujah. This is a good gospel. Oh, yes. Yeah? This is a good gospel. Oh, yes. Who can give me the correct time, brothers? Hallelujah. Two o'clock. Be back this evening at five o'clock. Everybody, come on back. Come on back, God willing, we'll be back at five o'clock. Bless God to labor in word and doctrine. God be our helper. Be with me next week in Bronx, New York. God willing, we'll be in Bronx next week. Amen. Saturday and Sunday, we'll be there. God be our helper. 
You come on and all of our new brothers and sisters that's here in Brooklyn, until we get a place, you come on and be with the saints over there in Bronx. Don't sit home. Don't you sit home and wait for me to get things rolling here. You come on over there in Bronx. You come on there. You come on and be there. Sit where you can hear God's word preach and get the gospel of God in you. May God bless you. Come on back at 5 o'clock so we can close this good meeting out. Let us all stand. Brother Minister Pendar will close us out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your man servant. Thank you for delivering this message unto us to bring us out of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for those souls that are going down in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, I pray that you just continue to strengthen the man's servant. Continue to speak into his heart that he may bring the word to us. Hallelujah. Keep him in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah. We thank you for him. Thank you for the prophets and the apostles. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on back at 5 o'clock.